This health webcast has been prepared by Jose Perez de la Cruz for the People for People project of the Terence Higgins Trust. This webcast is the first in a series on the common opportunistic infections which may be observed in a person with late-stage HIV. In this edition we are going to talk mainly about Kaposi's sarcoma. Before we go on though, let's define what an opportunistic infection is. An opportunistic infection is an infection caused by bacterial, viral, fungal, or protozoan pathogens that take advantage of a person with a weakened immune system. Such a weakened immune system usually only occurs in someone with HIV who is receiving certain cancer treatment or has undergone an organ transplant and as a result has to take anti-rejection drugs to suppress the immune system. Many of these opportunistic infections are carried by a majority of people in the community, but normally a healthy immune system will keep them in check. It is only when someone has the previously mentioned compromised immunity that these infections become a problem. On to Kaposi's sarcoma then. Kaposi's sarcoma or Kansas for short was the reason HIV came to be discovered in the first place. Kansas is a kind of skin cancer which we now know has a separate viral origin from HIV. At the beginning of the epidemic there was an outbreak of Kansas in the gay populations of California and New York. Before the AIDS epidemic Kansas was such a rare disease that doctors other than specialists would likely never diagnose even a single case. The number of cases in California and New York in 1981 was so much higher than would normally be expected, and indeed has ever been observed before that this prompted the Centers for Disease Control, the main federal public health body in the USA, to undertake large-scale investigations. Along with a concurrent epidemic of pneumocystis pneumonia, this led to the eventual discovery of the HIV virus in 1983. Pathologically Kansas is a kind of skin cancer which affects the blood vessel walls. In HIV infection it is very aggressive and can grow very quickly. It is usually first observed on the skin but as the disease advances also invades the internal organs, particularly hollow organs such as the digestive tract and intestines. We now know that it is caused by a virus in the herpes family. Human herpes virus number 8, HHV8 for short. It may also be referred to as KSHV, Kaposi sarcomer specific herpes virus. This virus is certainly sexually transmitted but can also be transmitted by deep kissing and oral sex. It is not possible to develop Kansas without co-infection with this virus. Again most people who are infected will not develop Kansas unless they are immunocompromised in some way. The most typical symptoms of Kansas are skin lesions blotches, which may start out looking like a bruise. However, unlike a bruise these lesions don't go away and eventually multiply. They start out being red in color moving to purple and finally brown or sometimes even black. The condition can be treated. In most cases the aggressive form of Kansas associated with HIV will only occur in someone whose virus is not completely suppressed i.e. undetectable and who has a degree of damage to their immune system. Once a person starts HIV medication the lesions usually reduce and eventually disappear as the immune system recovers. Other treatment options for Kansas include surgery and chemotherapy. Surgery often has poor outcomes as it can only be used to remove localized lesions, and once Kansas has moved into the lymph nodes, the spread cannot be halted by surgery alone. Once a lesion has been removed, it is also possible that it may begin to grow from the borders of the surgical scar. This is because Kansas is a systemic condition, affecting the entire body not just isolated portions of skin as in other skin cancers such as melanoma. Chemotherapy, usually with drugs such as vincristine or vinblastine is generally more successful than surgery.